We're in Paris. Luc Besson is the director. He has made a number of films that you know about, including La Femme Nikita, including The Professional. His new film is called The Fifth Element, starring Bruce Willis and others, and I am pleased to have him with us as we continue our conversations from Paris. Welcome. Nice thank to you. have you here. Thank you. Paris welcome, is welcome in Paris. <laughs> well, thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, you actually were born what, a little, a few, few miles outside of Paris. No, I'm born in Paris. Yeah, yeah but, but grew up. Grew up in Yugoslavia and Greece. Yeah. First, for the first ten years, then go back to civilization. Yes. Where center is, of Paris. <laughs> <laughs> is that where you developed this love of the sea and and the water, yeah, which yeah. came from that yeah. that early film you did? Yeah. About the I'm still wet a little, <laughs> I think, from this time. T tell me about The Fifth Element, just simply because much talk about it. It comes out in the summer. It's a hot, big film. America takes great pride in the fact that America makes all of the big action films. And then you come along and say, no, that's not quite true. <laughs> Here I am, and I can make these films. Yeah, the purpose was not this one, was not to bother anyone. <laughs> it was just to... Um, now, I have this, this, this story in my mind since I'm 16, 16 years old, yeah. so I just have this fantasy in my head, and I think there is, I mean, Americans really know how to make big sci-fi and action movie, and, and they, some of them are excellent, and some of them are maybe, you know, on the same, you know, kind of um, mm -hmm. uh, range and the same, and... And some of them are terrible. And, s yeah, thank you to say it. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe the funny thing was to bring, you know, from Europe we have a kind of different culture about comics or about the, the paintings and mm -hmm. about the, the poetry and things. It was just to bring a little uh, European touch in the same kind of story, just to, to show another, another fa face of these uh, sci-fi movies that you usually see. So I think it was just... Interesting. The funny thing, for example, is con it's to show the opposite of an American uh, normal type of movie. Is the movie is very large at the beginning, 23rd century, everything's changed, yeah. 400 flying cabs everywhere. Uh -huh. And the more you go in a movie and the more you realize that it's about a man and a woman who has to talk about love. And the, the final scene yeah. is like the shots are like this, just between a man and a woman. And, you know, this kind of movement is not typically uh, action American movie and I mean it, it's just too it's just good to open the door and to show something else. You mean there's a story here and dialogue? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you actually once made a film in black and white in which there was very little dialogue. What was the name of that? The Daniel Combat, The Last Combat. Yeah, that was almost your first film, wasn't it? It and was my first and film. And you didn't have a whole lot of money, so you didn't give them a lot of dialogue. I don't have at all money. <laughs> you in fact applied to the French government, I guess, they, mm. some arts commission or something, and no, said... No, they gave me nothing. They gave you nothing? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, I, 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 I was with my co-producer, yeah. called uh, Jolivet, who play in a movie, in fact, and we just take the phone book that we have, call everybody, and say, okay, if you have some money, you can have, you know, if you give 10,000, 10, you have 1% of the movie. If you give, you know, 20, 100, 000, yeah. you have 2%. And then we sell... We sell parts of the movie to people who get some money. So, uh, um, uh, a guy from a, a um, travel agency got a bit of it. Yeah. A guy who sell shoes on the Champs Elysees get a part <laughs> of the movie. A friend of mine who has a, a car accident, so he, he's got a lot of money from the insurance. So, thank you for the insurance who take twenty percent of the movie, and that's how we produce the first movie. The, the funny thing is. Nobody in the, in the French business and no one at the government give anything. They don't believe in it at all. And the movie just appeared, boom, like a mushroom. Was it successful? It was quite successful, but we got like 12 prizes around the world. And, and the movie was like a, a kind of little door open for, for the, all these kids who was in my back <laughs> and who wants to make movies. And suddenly, suddenly it was possible. Yeah. to do a movie with nothing, you know, and it, ch it changed quite the mentality. After that, producers start to say, oh, wait a minute, we have to be more careful with all these little mushrooms coming from everywhere, you know. Yeah, but in interesting, you could take a leap forward from that whole idea to looking at the Academy Awards last year 
And most of the films were independent and, and, and that garnered all the attention. I mean, they said there was only one real true Hollywood film, which was Jerry Maguire. Also had a certain independence to it. Mm -hmm. But English Patient was an independent film, essentially. I think it's a good move from, from the business to, to, to push a little. Because I think if you, if you want the, to keep the people in theaters, you have to be on the top all the time, propose new things, open doors. You can't just have one mood and say, you know, lethal weapon, three, four, five, six, ten, twelve. Yeah, right. You know, you, you have to take risk. So as soon as you know that it's working, then you can do maybe a sequel or two. But you have all, constantly, you're obliged, you're obliged to, you know, looking for new audiences. And, the, you know, the audience are now, it's not like one big audience. If you have 12 movies in a complex, in a multiplex, you can have 12 audiences. Do you find as much satisfaction, and even more so, making a big budget film with a sci-fi film like Fifth Element as you did making something that's lesser budget, like The Professional, like La Femme Nikita, like... It's, it's an interesting question because, in fact, the circle around the camera is five meters, 15 feet. Yeah. And you... Now what does you, that mean? That means that you can only shoot within... Yeah, you globally, you know, I'm at the camera, I have right. a, a first assistant, right. a guy who pushed the traveling, one guy for the sound, the script girl, the actor in the front of the camera, and that's it. That's right. your circle. Yes. So whatever is the budget, it's always outside of this circle. Because on the circle, it's like at the end of the mine, you know? You have your hands, and you have your tool, and you have to extract the diamond. And one guy can do it with a tool, and that's it. You know? And I really have the feeling that this moment that you try to extract from the actor, to print on the camera, it's very physical. And that's the only moment, the, the, that's the only magical moment. On the back, at the outside, if you have 200 technicians or 600 technicians with big salaries or not big salaries, it doesn't change anything. You still have to extract from the, from, from the actor what you want to print. And and I always feel the same since I've made seven movies and it's the same circle and yeah. most of the time it's the same people in the circle yeah. except, I noticed except the, fact the actor. That, I noticed mm -hmm. in fact looking at the credits for The Fifth Element there were people that had worked on I think the cameraman for The Fifth Element is the same cameraman you had on either La Femme Nikita or The Professional. Yeah, both, yeah. both. The okay. DP in fact. So you, have, you bring a kind of ensemble of your own to each project. Yeah, kind add, of. Yeah. Add yeah. subtract but yeah. kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you, the, the writing of the script, are you involved in that? Uh, yeah, I wrote it. You wrote it? Yeah. You wrote The Fifth Element. Did you yeah. write The Professional? Yeah. La Femme yeah. Nikita? Yeah. So you only make what you write so far? No, yeah, I'm, I would love to save two years and, and find something already made. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, I love that. I love to write. I love this period of writing. I love that because, you know, you bother nobody. Yeah. And you can, you know, you can ride the 500 horses just to ride. No, the 2,000 <laughs> horses arrive. And, you know, you bother nobody. You know, you can yeah. just add it, and that's it. Then after you fight with the producer, and, and at the end, it's the 50 horses arrive. But, um, no, I, I love this part. But I would, I would love to, to get a script, you know, and fall in love and say, wow. I think if somebody brings me one day like a... Uh, flew over the cuckoo's nest, yeah, or Amadeus. How about the Lost World? Would you have liked to have made a film like that? No, because it's mm, a sequel. No, and, and because Stephen is really the best to do this type of what? film. And dinosaur stories. No, he's the best because he's he still have this um, this um, uh, key to go in in, in the in the kind. Uh, the, um, the little teeny part we have where we're still a child yes. and he has the key he knows how to come in and I and, and I lost it now a little I, I'm still yeah. a little naive about and that and he hasn't lost it no he no no he no. has not lost it no yeah that exactly that part yeah. of him yeah. that still knows. knows how to he connect it's the awe and wonderment of a child yeah and that's brilliant that he you know he knows how to do that do guys like you, young, up-and-coming filmmakers, 
look with a certain what about Spielberg. You don't know, you know that people have said that you know you're a French Spielberg that has been said about you. Without speaking to that, do you what is it that young filmmakers look to about Steven Spielberg and say, wow. I don't know. I mean, they they say that maybe because of the. the <laughs> yes, of course. That's it. That's it. <laughs> no, the good he, thing. He doesn't ride his own motorcycle, though. You came here in a motorcycle. Yes. So that's a big difference. That's a difference. Yeah. I think, the, Stephen. The thing we have to know as as a director is Stephen can do everything. Yeah. You, you Schindler's know, List and Lost World. Yes, he can do everything, and it's very reductive to say, oh, Spielberg is just good to make, you know, big commercial movie, because yeah. it's wrong. Yeah. This guy is one of the most brilliant director. The funny thing is, so he can do everything. He can make the, you know, the English patient with, you know, a hand here on the back of his, just like this. Well, don't you know? say that, because that, no, no, that makes it look like that it didn't take much to make the English patient. Yeah, it, it takes a lot, but, you know, Stephen is really very, very strong as a director. He knows you know, he's very impressive. The funny thing about it is what he wants to do, <laughs> you know, because he wants to stay sometime a child and he wants to do things, yeah. who move and things. That's, that's why I think it's amazing and that's funny somewhere because he can do everything, in fact, but he chooses to do that. And that's, that's very powerful, you know, because most of the time directors are talented for a kind, yeah. which is my case, for example, you know, I'm, I'm maybe talented for a certain kind of movie and I will maybe feel uncomfortable to go outside of it. Well, also, he's 50 and you're 39, yeah, right? Yeah, so I still have So time. you have some time. <laughs> <laughs> do you, where do you see your niche? Do you see yourself making certain kinds of films? No, I have, I There's think a similarity between what started as Leon and became Leon and became Leon, yeah. and then became yeah. The Professional, yeah. and something else that, and, and, and uh, La Femme, Nikita. Mm -hmm. There's some similarity between those two films. Yeah. Focus, make a movie character. Make Atlantis. That yeah. you know, I spent two years around the world filming to film right. fishes. Right. So it was quite different. The Big Blue was quite different. I think I have an attraction for emotion, from the basic, you know, struggle of life and emotion, and I'm, I'm very attracted by that and the contrast of it all the time. You know, a symbol, for example, will be in La Femme Nikita when she goes for her birthday and she's so happy and she opened the thing and it's a gun yeah. and she has to shoot two persons. That's my, that's my field, you know, that's, <laughs> I, I love this kind of contrast all the time and you laughing and 10 minutes later you, right. you know, have tears in your eyes and oh my God, what are they going to do? And 10 minutes and, later you you're know, fighting for your life. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I love this kind of thing where you really, you know, taken by the movie and you can't, in fact, my goal is to stop people eating popcorns. You know, I want them. Don't say that. The theater owners are going to go nuts when you say. Yeah, that. I'm sorry. No, I want them to buy it. You know, <laughs> take it and stay it. like this for 20 minutes exactly. because they can't eat it. You know, that's my goal. I, I, I love that. Do you like to go to the theater and watch people watch? I your do movies? that. I do that all the time. Do you, <laughs> yeah. do you really? Yeah. Looking to see how they react. Yeah, I and love that. Do you find that they all react the same or they react different? Everybody react differently. It's very funny. Everybody. It's yeah, different countries and things. It's so funny. Americans are different from French in terms yeah. of what they like. Yeah. In much more. They are, Americans are much more uh, light. I mean, when they're laughing, they laugh more. Yeah. You know, but they, they maybe they are less involved. You know, in in the story and the meaning of the story and all this. You know, they they less involved. They they don't they eat popcorns. They want to. <laughs> They, they don't want to be involved too much. Why did you go into movies? Why was film the thing that turned you on? In fact, I, I'm not a, a deep moviegoer. No, and you don't have the same background that no. people like Stephen and others who've wanted to do this for a long time. No, no. I, I, you know, I just fall in love with movie business in, uh, like at 17 years old. I went in a set of a friend for a short movie. Uh, and I've seen the ambience, I've seen all these people. It was a Sunday, nobody was paid, and everybody was working as hell. And I say, wow, I want to, I want to leave here. <laughs> you know, it sounds, I don't know, they just do that for, mm. for the movie, you know? Yeah. And I was like, very impressed by that. Can you think of what it might be, comp 
similar to, I mean, you're painting a picture in your mind and you're putting it on film. You're telling a story. Mm -hmm. you're, what's it like to direct a movie? I think it's like, it's really like we were talking about extraction right. sooner. So it's really like to, to get a, a stone who could be a nice ring, you know, and, and you get this stone and it's just, you know, a big stone, but you can, you feel that, you know, if you cut here and cut here, you can make a nice diamond. And it's, it's the same feeling because it's very pragmatic somewhere to direct, to direct. It's shot by shot, minute by minute, you know, okay, I'm gonna do this shot and I can cut with this one and the actor and, you know, he's in good shape today. Uh, I'm not gonna make the scene now. I'm gonna wait a little, he needs to warm up. Oh, this actress, she's hot. Okay, let's do first her. You know, it's very sneaky in the same time mm -hmm. because it's just about this moment that you have to catch and, and print and that's it, you know? So it's between the the guy who, who cut the diamond and the magician. Yes. You know, who just, hop, grab it, you know? <laughs> so it's very, it's a strange, strange job. Bruce Willis. Yes. Your star of this film. Yes. He brings what to it? He brings people to the theater because if it's action adventure, most of the action adventure films he's made have been popular. So the audience is, from the beginning, interested in what he's doing. I think my first thing, I always try, most of the time I always try first, to be honest, you know, because it's a good thing to do. Right. So I take the script and I say, okay, let's say it's a fairy tale. And you know, this little girl come from the sky and say, look, who do you want to play the part? <laughs> yes. You know, and I say, okay, if really I have the choice, I will say Bruce Willis, because he has this kind of hero um, thing, you know, he's he can take a gun and shoot and, and he's credible about that. But he's also very charming and very human and, you know, and the character was like this in the script. Yeah. And, and Bruce was the best for me because he can really play both. And most of the part I liked the most in the movie with him, it's especially when he's totally shy with the girl and he doesn't know what to say and, you know, that's yeah. the part I prefer because it's, and he's... Because um, you're sure it, it works, it goes against the grain of the Yeah, it's the action fragility. Yeah. Most of the time I love to show that women can be strong. And most of the time I like to show that men can be fragile. You said you know? an interesting thing once about that. You think that we really ought to turn the world over to women in the next century. Didn't you say that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Do you remember saying that? Um, or something like that? Something like that. Basically you said men have screwed it up. Now you just said I like just take a I like strong book. women. And, <laughs> <laughs> just go with me for a second. You said I like strong. You know, you just said you wanted a woman that could be strong. Yes. Yeah. But you had said somewhere in an interview that I read. No, I said that I sh we should put women at the to give the power to women, and, right. and we should go in the holidays. Yeah. Well, that's pointly you know? put put them in charge, <laughs> and let them have a whack at running the world and because we men beach. have screwed it up and go to and the beach. Yeah, that's and we take care of the kids. <laughs> I would love that. You know, just, would you love that? Yeah, spend my day on the beach with the kids. Are you kidding? And let put them in yeah. the government. You know, and let them deal with the politics and let them yeah, be... Yeah, because I don't know, you know, when they're really in charge of something, they have this... Maybe because, you know, they have, they have the possibility to give life. So they have maybe a better sense about what <laughs> life means deeply. So when, when the time is, comes to say, okay, let's press about this bomb or let's build this weapon, maybe they, you know, even if they can be strong and protect the country, they have a, a kind of little sense about or, what it means to build a life. And I think it's, it's a, big, uh, a big thing. That's why I think they, they are better than, than us too for big responsibility. Man, every woman in the world just fell in love with you. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> <laughs> you thought this out, didn't you? <laughs> uh, character though. Find you when Bruce Willis said yes to this film, you said yes. I mean, the idea that you had your lead oh. choice. The little girl comes down with bringing you the fantasy, and you said, if I could have anybody for this film, it's Bruce Willis. And Bruce Willis said, you know, give me all the money. 
show me the money and I'll do it. No. He didn't say that. No, he said the contrary. He, he said, take the script, he read it in two hours, and he said, it's great. Let's, let's do, it. do it. Now, how and long? I kiss him. Yeah, you kissed him, oh, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I take him in my arms <laughs> and I kiss him. <laughs> See, because it was so, it was so, I mean, I've just seen an actor, you yeah. know, an actor who read the script and who liked it and, and yeah. said to the guy, it's great, let's do it. It was so simple. There was no committee, no agent, nothing, just no, let's go. Yeah, we were just together in, in the kitchen and, and it was so, you know, I love this, this kind of moment because it's, it's amazing from everything we know about movie business and agents and all these things. And at the end, you know, you meet one of the 10 be best stars and it's still very human and very simple. I mean, I, I, will, I will always be um, faithful to him for that because... And after you had Bruce Willis, getting the money, getting anything was easy. He was an additional. It was no. It was the deal. For no, everything. the movie was green lighted before. Really? Yeah. At a hundred million dollars, or what? Sixty million, or seventy million, or yeah, whatever. Or, yeah, around somewhere around in there, yeah. between seventy-five and a hundred. Yeah. What does having made the Fifth Element do for you for your career? Honestly, I don't know. You know, you don't care I, about that either. I don't. Yeah, I'm. I, I presume it's changed something if I measure the, the pile of scripts that I have now. And, and, and the price they offer me now, which is yeah. you know, much more better now, so it's probably changed something. Yeah. Did you make it, though, because it was the fantasy film that you first conjured up in your mind when you were 16 years old, or at least the idea, the rudimentary mm -hmm. idea? Or did you make this film because you, I wanted to make this kind of movie because it, it's a nice next step no. for me as a film director. No, if you, if you watch my seven movie, I always go boom, boom, yeah, boom, that's boom, true. boom, 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 boom. Budget go up and down and, and sometimes it's very, you know, Atlantis, it's really like a poem, very quiet, you know, and then Leon is just after the professional and Nick, Big Blue is about two divers, right. you know, falling in love with dolphins and just after it's La Femme Nikita and, you know, one thing has nothing to do with the other. I think my, my, probably my next movie, sh you know, will be totally, you know, I don't know, maybe a seven, you know, 17th century black and white, you know, probably something like this, <laughs> you know, because I think it's, it's, I, I think it's my, my job, in fact, to, to, to attract people, you know, open new doors all the time and say, yeah, you like it, okay, try this one, yeah. and try this one, and sometimes they don't follow, but they still watching you because they know that you always try something so they they keep and that's what i like with the audience is they they keep you yeah. know aware of they, what they basically doing. say i like this and when you say well let's push over here they're saying okay let's go with luke to try that yeah most yeah now yeah because they they make money with my seven movies so now they they believe me you don't really give do. much quarter to the studios I mean, the stories are legend about you, in a sense, exercising almost total control. Yeah, I'm, I'm a spoiled child, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a, a relation of, of, of trust. We were talking about that. When the movie is ready to open, yeah. and they have to decide the trailer, the poster, the title of the movie, I trust them. You do. You know, they say, this is the good poster, this is the good way to promote the movie. I say, okay, I believe you. So I'm just expecting in the other way, when I have the script and I know what I want to do with it, if sometimes they're confused and say, Luke, are, are, are you sure about that? I say, yeah, I am. And I expect from them to, to believe me, which is, you know, a kind of... A, I will feel guilty if when it comes to their area, I will say, no, I want, I want this, this is not good. And, you know, I, I respect them a lot. But, you know, uh, you, you need one person to do one, one job. One idea, one yeah, vision. Yeah. yeah. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. You nice enjoy your trip I in did. Paris? Oh, man, yeah. it's just starting, too. <laughs> I can't wait. There's so much to do, Spring. so much to see, so much wine to drink, so much great food to have, <laughs> movies to see. And that's the, theater, best, great that's the best season. That's the best season. Spring with, yeah. you know, all the, the Parisian yeah. women all around. Yeah. There. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, don't you? <laughs> the French Open is here. Yeah. It's incredible. Uh, thank you very much. Much success. Nice to you.